This house is full of all kinds of my beautiful mosaic designs that I've created that are mostly architectural. Um, so I've got my stained glass shower stall that I installed back in 2011. The bathroom is just outstanding. Everybody that's coming today is just in total awe. Just that I love my passion of creating. It's so fun. And it's like, I, I started this four years ago. This is my fifth year. And it's been a rough road getting it out there and people realizing there's something more than subway tile. Well, the kids grew up, the husband was on swing shift, and I needed to figure out what I was gonna do with my time in the evening. And so I went to the college and I took a, learn to build your own guitar and make a mosaic class. Needless to say, the mosaics went out. I don't know, I just love my life right now because it's, I work right here at the house in my studio and then I go and I deliver these beautiful, amazing mosaics that they're gonna have forever. We don't think it's weird, but it is rare. It's rare in uh, at least two ways. One, this streamlined, nautical, modern style uh, was rare at the residential level uh, in 1948. And it's even more rare that such homes were preserved because they were kind of high-end homes and people with money tend to constantly update their homes and throw out the old dishwashers. This has the original 1948 porcelain built-in General Electric top loading dishwasher. You can take a look at it later on your own. Very forward-leaning, yet it still has these Art Deco ornate touches like the fireplaces and the brass railings and wraparound windows and dining car straight from an ocean liner at the time. Uh, Streamline Modern, like I said, is was common not at the residential level, but to get a sort of picture of it, here's a cheat sheet, this little children's book with nine stories. And anyway, it, it, it's, you can see like zeppelins and, and trains and things with grids. And... What's one of your very favorite items in this entire house? My wife. No, um, um, well, the doorbell is pretty cool if you, if you push it and hear that. Uh, I think it's unique because I've transformed a terrible house into a space that is accessible for everybody, I say one word, and everybody, two words. It's a house that anybody, anytime in their life, in any capacity, can get into. And I made it for myself so that I could age in place. I didn't know that term when I started, but I said, I've had it. I'm going to put roots and I'm not going to move until I die. So I've, I've made a space that uh, focuses on color, because Portland is very gray, and so I've got a lot of color. I have a lot of natural light, a lot of natural ventilation. I'm trying to maximize my enjoyment and minimize my maintenance, because I can't get around like I used to, but I still want to enjoy space. People have described it as a Shangri-La, because there's a lot of natural materials, animals, and I've got chickens. 
There's a six foot high fence around the entire property. So I have a space that is private, that I, go, I can open to the public, that I open to friends, but I feel very secure here because with my disability, I want to feel as secure as I can, in all honesty. You know, you are going to age, most likely. Try to think about the future, not only for yourself, but other people. Most people's homes I cannot enter. I could 20 years ago, but that was 20 years ago. This is the House of Sarcasm, the home of myself and my husband, Charles. We've lived here for 20 years. We started calling our home the House of Sarcasm back in Montana when we lived in a studio apartment and it used to be a little more sarcastic with each other than we are now. And one time my husband said, why don't you just make a sign for the door that says the house of sarcasm. We've had some crazy stuff going here, especially the first few years we moved in here. Chairs shooting across the floors by themselves. Uh, things rolling down the stairs. We have an annual Halloween party here. It's the house of sarcasm Halloween party. We usually have like eight or nine rock bands that play here in our basement. Um, my band, Dark Gun and the Vignettes, were an eight piece punk rock doo-wop group. You've been bragging in line with social dues. Your tiny jack boots, they stop and fit on and poo. The badges you pin on, they cover but you're a fool. You won't be dismissed till we beat you black and blue. And cover Nazis, they must die. Cover Nazis, they must die, 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 die. Cover Nazis, they must die. Cover Nazis, they must die, 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 die. I have a spoon that I've saved for many years. Um, one of my other favorite pieces is uh, a broken guitar that Christine painted uh, it's out Riviera and uh, it can no longer be repaired and uh, I can just never part with it. I make a lot of art here, play music here, paint on the walls, um, so a lot of art happens here. And I do have uh, a little packet of envelopes behind me that's uh, got all my special love memorabilia and stuff that Christine, all the letters she sent me over the years. Yeah. We're in a Boeing 727-200 home. It's a retired jetliner and it's my home. Uh, the aircraft has been here for about 17 and a half years. I've lived in the aircraft for about 13, or rather 15 years. I'd, I'd like people to explore the concept because I think it is a good vision. About three jetliners retire from service every day. Mostly they're just flown to a, a boneyard and scrapped or as, as I rudely say, they're flown to a death camp and executed. And it's a shame because it's aerospace technology. And we, as a species, do that at the rate of about three per day. We destroy our finest aerospace technology, while at the same time, we walk out into a place like that and gather a bunch of sticks and a bunch of metal spikes somewhere. And we pound the sticks together with the metal spikes and say, okay, home sweet home, our best technology. Well, it's not. Aerospace technology is clearly superior. You know, after the D.B. Cooper incident, it was inspected a little bit uh, to, to the extent appropriate. Um, and then it went back into service and then flew to the end of its life. And then it was summarily executed. And, um, you know, unceremoniously, I should say, executed. And that's a shame because it had real history. People are really fascinated with the D.B. Cooper thing, and that aircraft was just shredded. Yeah, that's like O.J.'s white Bronco. Yeah, 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 it was a real shame, and it was unnecessary. Well, jetliners are flying homes. They, they are built as homes. Um, the, the only difference is that they can fly, too. The weirdest house I ever walked into 
had a devil inside. Hail Satan. <laughs> well, hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, this is my home, and my home is a private museum called Devilish Little Things Museum. And it's the home of my just about 20 year of collecting antique devilish items. Anything from whimsical novelty objects to Krampus and Halloween collectibles. There are puppets behind us, um, jewelry, there's some erotica. Anything in a devilish theme. If you have horns and you have a tail, then you're welcome. <laughs> This is uh, probably one of my oldest pieces, late 1700s, early 1800s, a beautiful wood carved pipe. And the really awesome part about this pipe is the backside. The backside is a nun with her mouth open where you can stick in the stem. So, of course, it was a man's pipe while you all get to see the devil. Me, the smoker, I get to enjoy sticking it in her. He never leaves the bedroom because he doesn't have to. <laughs> so this is an old converted church from around 1911. Now the previous owners put in this bar and they built it right above where they used to do the baptism. You know when they did the witch hunts and at some point they realized that they had been killing a lot of innocent people and they realized, wait a minute, there are no witches or devils. After that, they really kind of started making more fun of the devil. <laughs> it's to me almost like celebrating the end of a very bad time. You know, when they realized, okay, we killed a lot of innocent people and let's just, you know, maybe it was easier for them to make more fun of it and embrace it. But to me, it's kind of a, you know, celebrating a time after bad things have been happening. <laughs>